Waging war on corruption. Alex Jones on the GCM Radio Network. Big Brother. Mainstream media. Government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. By the way, the biggest buzz I've ever heard, I think, is for House of Cards. I haven't seen it one episode yet, because quite frankly, I'm either with my family or I'm working at night. I just, it's kind of shameful. All work and no play makes Jack a crazy boy. Uh, but I've got to start watching this because they say the Chinese government's obsessed with it. It's getting watched like 100 million times a week or something worldwide. With, uh, well, Kevin Spacey played by me. I'm joking. People make that joke. I don't look like Kevin Spacey. Wish I did. The point is, is we got Stefan Molyneux here. We're taking phone calls this segment and the next. But he's going to give us his review of House of Cards. He's uh, coming up uh, in the next segment. Right now, let's talk to Steve in Colorado. Thanks for holding. And uh, thank you for joining us today, Steve. Thank you, Alex. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, what when, mm -hmm. yeah we just want to say hi to Stephen and watch that Karl Marx uh, thing, uh, bio that you put together. Yeah. Oh, this is Karl yeah. Marx uh, basically preying upon the poor and the working class after talking about capitalists being evil for doing the same thing. He had sex with his maid, had a kid, tossed her out on the street, uh, never paid her a penny. Uh, all the studies that Karl Marx did of the uh, market system at the time, he could never find a worker who didn't wasn't paid anything except in his own house, his maid. He was the worst exploiter. I was just pointing out the moral hypocrisy. Oh, and he was an angel compared to Lenin. Oh, yeah. Well, Lenin, he wasn't an outright murderer, Marx, but Lenin was an outright just savage genocidal murderer. I mean, nonstop blood fests. But uh, sorry, caller, right? we don't get distracted. Do you have a question? Well, yeah, it's kind of funny, though, just real quick. I, I want to talk about the IRS. I'm being honest, and stuff, but it's funny how these neo-Marxists of today, through osmosis almost, have this same degree of hypocrisy that Karl Marx did. I mean, it's almost, like I said, through osmosis. From. It's just incredible. They're bloodthirsty criminals who have grabbed the moral high ground and lectured to everyone when they're exempt from everything they're doing and engage in every dirty trick. And hey, you try claiming the fifth in an IRS investigation, they'll clap you in irons. But the hussy up there can be caught lying last year, taking the fifth, does it again, she doesn't get in trouble. And the IRS is going to be enforcing some aspects of Obamacare, and they are desperate to get out of Obamacare themselves. They are lobbying like crazy to get out of Obamacare. Oh, yeah, the unions, the government people, oh, yeah. and they're all going to be exempt. Oh, it's for us. It's for us, Alex. I mean, you know, not for the rulers. I mean, you don't build, you know, your, your electric fences around your bedroom if you're the farmer. It's just for the cows. Horrible. Did you have another comment? That's where I need you guys' help. I am being audited. Sorry to hear that. Goodbye, you. I was a drywall contractor in Colorado. My entire livelihood and trade was awarded to illegal aliens, put out of business. My home taken from the MERS, all the value of my property wiped away. I know, they almost force you with, because again, I'm not even against the illegals, but the point is, you have them here, they'll work for less, their wives go on welfare, they then undermine the cost, you're in the system, the IRS comes and takes you over. You almost have to survive to just start acting like the illegals, get a fake name, pay nothing, operate, do whatever you want, and, and just sit there in jail when they arrest you for whatever, and they'll just let you out. I mean, you, you can really learn something from the illegals. They're almost the total libertarians, except they then siphon off the state. What do you say about that, Stefan? Oh, I mean, American immigration policy since the 60s has been a disaster. I mean, in the 60s, I mean, and this is the case in, in other countries uh, like uh, Australia and so on. They try to bring people in who are educated, uh, who are at least share some of the common Switzerland. values of the West. Yeah, I mean, you can't just go and try emigrating to Australia if you're coming from some third world country. The Democrats, uh, and again, I don't want to sound like I'm pounding on the Democrats, like I'm no Republican, but the Democrats. But they're the virulent cancer. They are very much bringing in their voting base. And their voting base is, is underskilled people from third world countries. This has been Explicit in their platform since the 1960s, uh, I think it was Ted Kennedy who first brought in this bill, used to get 90% of immigrants from Europe, now get the majority of immigrants coming in from unskilled and third world. And this drives down wages. And then they say, well, now you see we need minimum wage laws to bring the wages back up. And uh, it's, you know, I'm, I'm for open borders. There's no such thing as, you know, an illegal anybody, right? But given this policy, it's just a complete... Well, I was about to say, you, but, but yeah, you could have open borders worldwide if there wasn't any welfare. Exactly. But you have welfare and then let them vote to take my guns? Yeah. I mean, they're, 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 literally, they can then vote to make me their slave. Yeah, and it happens. It, it, it is. That's what democracy is. Two wolves vote that I'm a sheep, I'm their dinner.
Yeah. And they want to make me the sheep and take my guns. So I'm a sheep. We'll be right back. The facts are in. The studies are legion. Sodium fluoride and other toxic members of the fluoride family are devastating the health and cognitive ability of the American people. So why are the social engineers adding it to the water? Simple. Dumb down the host population that the parasitic technocracy is feeding on. We may not have been able to get fluoride out of the water supply yet, but we can help to get it out of our bodies. I am extremely excited to announce the exclusive InfoWars Life Fluoride Shield Formula fusing six of the best documented ingredients from around the world to help the body remove not just toxic fluoride residues from the body, but a whole host of toxic substances. Let's take a stand against the globalist by blocking their poisons with Fluoride Shield. I use Fluoride Shield every day. Secure your Fluoride Shield and other pioneering formulations at InfoWarsLife.com today. Let's start cleansing our bodies now and support the InfoWar at the same time. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Hi folks, Alex Jones here with some important information. I want to tell you about Matt Redhawk and his team of patriots over at My Patriot Supply. Several years ago, Matt was sitting in his two-bedroom apartment, frustrated with the direction this country was headed, and the charlatans willing to sell us out for a quick buck. Deciding to take action, a company run by Patriots for Patriots was born. My Patriot Supply has never taken a loan or accepted outside funding. They now operate two distribution facilities and employ over 50 hardworking American men and women. It is rare to find companies who practice what they preach. And that's why I stock my pantry with high-quality storable foods from My Patriot Supply. Go to MyPatriotSupply.com forward slash Alex today for special offers on emergency food storage or call their preparedness specialist at 866-229-0927. That's 866-229-0927. Do business with someone who shares your values. MyPatriotSupply.com slash Alex. The globalist social engineers are not just targeting us with propaganda. They are manipulating our genetics. We are being targeted at every level by estrogen mimickers that lower our testosterone and other hormones and natural compounds that the body needs. After consulting top doctors, nutritionists, pharmacists, and others, we have developed what I believe is the ultimate non-GMO organic super male vitality formula sourced from powerful organic herbs and then concentrated for maximum potency. Super Male Vitality was developed to activate your body's own natural processes instead of using synthetic chemicals. Super Male Vitality by InfoWars Life is so powerful that I only take half the recommended dose. For a limited time, we are offering 15% off Super Male Vitality at InfoWarsLife.com to introduce you to this powerful supplement. Visit InfoWarsLife.com today to secure your Super Male Vitality. InfoWarsLife.com the alex jones show because there is a war on for your mind well there is a war on for your mind big time and i am your host alex jones the news sites are infowars.com prisonplanet.com the subscriber site for the nightly news is prisonplanet.tv and stefan Molyneux is going to be on that show tonight with our great reporters and researchers. And soon I'm launching the official TV system and expanding the show, and I'll be hosting the show, not just doing commentary like I did last night, most nights of the week. So no rest for those that don't want to be wicked. Uh, no rest for those that want to live in the age of reality and want to be free. It's an animating contest. It's addictive. So it's like exercise. Man, throw me in that briar patch every day. I got some really bad news for folks, but some good news as well. The enemy has shown their hand. We broke off of their sites bragging yesterday that they were about to get Facebook to restrict discussion of the Second Amendment. Uh, that article is Bloomberg moves to ban pro-gun speech. Uh, Facebook now working with the former New York mayor front groups to censor support for Second Amendment. This just got released an hour ago. It'll be going up on InfoWars.com. Moms demand action. Uh, literally, that's like three people in San Antonio when we had thousands out there. Uh, they tried to start a fight with us on video. We're going to add that to the article. Uh, this just was released March 5th. That's today, 2014. Facebook's announced today that the company uh, and its popular photo sharing subsidiary Instagram will take significant steps. Remember, they arrest kids that draw a picture of a gun at school to block potentially illegal firearm sales through their platforms. Now, that's meant to sound reasonable. For the first time, the sites will delete reported posts, reported by them, offering to buy or sell guns without background checks. 
Now, people go, well, that sounds reasonable. Then you read deeper. Anyone with a profile under 18 won't be able to see things about guns or read the word gun so they can have bots that block everything. This has already happened to us. We send out a pro-gun meme with like Hitler saying, I love gun control, you know, and stuff like that. Or people about Benghazi, the Navy SEAL group, they just block it. Yeah. And this has been their plan all along. And you read into the document, it's page after page. Uh, but it says Facebook will continue to report to law enforcement, blah, blah, blah. Facebook will take down reported pages of groups where guns are sold. And now, again, these are groups, gun shops and gun groups that then link to their gun shop. Yep. Guns not being sold there. Th they send it to a gun shop and make you buy it. Yep. But they create the solution until the owner of the page acknowledges the page that includes the information prominently at the top of the page. Facebook's help center will remind sellers that they may conduct background checks for so so it's all about you say you will comply with the laws. They're the new arbiters of free speech online. Uh, Facebook will provide public education ad space targeted at users interested in firearm related content to ensure they know about the gun laws. So now they'll be Mayor Bloomberg anti gun, literally brainwash the public, as the Attorney General said. That famous quote, I'm sure you've seen that, targeted at people so they get free advertising now. Uh, and uh, it goes on, it will block people from being able to see the gun sites. So uh, it gives them free advertising, you name it. This, th th these people always set themselves up like the ADL, Southern Poverty Law Center, over law enforcement, where they set all the policies. They're God. Rachel Maddow is God. Well, first of all, I, I can't imagine Facebook is really enjoying this process. You know, they say they're working with the New York government or whatever. And it's like, that's like me working with a mugger for the orderly transfer of my wallet. The fact that he has a gun to my ribs is pretty much the whole equation, right? I mean, the, what the government can do to business uh, is significant. Uh, I, know, I know a lot of businesses use government to, to get rent seeking, to get comparative advantage and so on. But if the government comes knocking and says, We'd really like you to work with us. Well, they are the guys with all the guns. And, we're, and we've been so compliant, that's what's empowered the beast. It's time to start not complying. No, but what's beautiful about this, and we were just talking about this in the break, that I think the government still thinks that they have a monopoly of information distribution. Like back in the day when there were like three networks and the government basically controlled or, or managed or had the license fees for all of these things, right? Licensed through the FCC. Now, I mean, what a great way to educate kids about the Second Amendment, because Lord knows with teenagers, like these people have never met a teenager. You go to a teenager and say, you're not allowed to see this. And it's two clicks away on the Internet. What's the first thing that that stay out of the liquor cabinet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think the average age stop chasing cheerleaders. The average age of kids getting porn these days is 10 to 11 years old when it's you know not legal until, I don't know, 18 or 19 or something like that. Right. So it's a beautiful way to get kids interested in the Second Amendment to have Facebook, Facebook stop locking stuff because now they're going to get educated about it. Well, that's it. They're it. putting it in the same category as porn. I mean, it's 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 mad and, and it's 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 wonderful how much work the government is doing on behalf of liberty advocates in helping the teenagers to understand the power of the state and helping them get interested in topics now taboo, which is, you know, I mean, that's like uh, it's catnip for a teenager. Oh, it's taboo. The powers that be don't want me to see this. Here I go to go and find it right away. I mean, you couldn't advertise education. Well, listen, they did that. I actually figured out the reason I was successful. One of the big make it or break it moments was I put out some documentaries about the military training for martial law, which they they do perennially, and they're doing it all the time. But the military got a hold of these documentaries, Police State 2000 and others, and I was already somewhat successful. And the Marine Corps and the Army across the board said, do not watch Alex Jones or listen to Alex Jones. Most of them didn't know who I was. That's why today, undoubtedly, we are like the number one show in the U.S. Armed Forces, because they still say, do not listen to him. Do not listen to Ron Paul. Do not... Do not get involved in the Tea Party. It's making them all run to it. What were they thinking? I mean, it, they're it, thinking they have control over the narrative. The narrative is fragmented. It used to be a sole control over the narrative, right? Like when the, the, the Catholic priests spoke the, the liturgy in Latin in the Middle Ages and the commoners didn't know Latin and they couldn't get a hold of the Bible. And then Martin Luther comes along, translates it into a language they can see, and the monopoly of Christendom it then fragments into, you know, Zwingalians and Anabaptists and, and Lutherans and all this kind of stuff. And that creates more individual debate and discussion. I think that the people in power now, they grew up in like the 70s or the 80s or whatever, and there was a monopoly of narrative back then. Now there's no monopoly of narrative. They think that they can close this down, and it's not going to be like whack-a-mole. Well, that's like they'll have... MSNBC or others go, 